Okay, so another example. So let us take little l2. So this is a set of all x equals xi sequences such that sigma mod xi square is finite i equals 1 to infinity. And what is the norm x2 is square root sigma i equals 1 to infinity mod x i square. Okay, so this is the space. So now we are going to define two operators. So t of x is a sequence 0, x1, x2 and so on. So you push it to the right, put a 0 in the front. So this is called the right shift operator. Similarly, s of x we are going to define as x2, x3 and so on. So you push it to the left and you get rid of the first coordinate x1 and this is called the left shift operator. Both of them are continuous linear operators because norm tx is equal to norm x in fact and norm sx is less than or equal to norm x. Okay, So we have that these two are continuous linear operators. So one can easily check that t star is equal to s and s star equal to t. Okay. So here of course we are identifying remember l2 star is the same as l2. So the, uh, that is why they are in the same spaces. Okay. So now we look at some properties of this adjoint. So the first important property, so V W Banach A from D A contained in V into W uh, is densely defined. So that the adjoint is defined. Then A star is closed. Okay, so proof. So to show G of A star is closed. Okay, so we take Vn convert this to V in W star. And A star Vn converges to F in V star. And what must we show? We must show, we have to show two things now because we are dealing with unbounded operators which may not be defined everywhere but only on a certain domain. So first we have to show that V belongs to domain of A star. And second, after that we can show that A star V equal to F. So we have to show both these things. So, okay, but what is, take any u in domain of A, what is the definition of the adjoint? So, A star Vn u equals Vn Au, okay. Now, you pass to the limit, so you get F u equals uh, Vau, okay. So, mod VAU is therefore less than or equal to norm F times norm U. So, this implies that V belongs to D of A star. And this condition here, which is true for all U in D of A, tells you, this one tells you that F equals a star because it satisfies the, the defining condition for A star U, A star uh, V, sorry, A star V. Okay, so this proves this proposition. Okay. Now the graph of A and graph of A star are related by a very simple relationship. So let us now define script J from W star cross V star into V star 
cross W star. So, we take V f and map it to minus f v. So, we are just flipping the coordinates and putting a minus sign in front of one. Then proposition V w Banach A from d A contained in V into W densely defined J as above then J of G A star equals G A pup. So, you see the annihilator and uh, the graphs and annihilators they all come together ok. So, proof two lines. So, you have let u in d a arbitrarily so so v f in g a star This means what? F equals A star B. And that implies F U equals V A U. This is for every U in D. I am not putting the subscripts, we know where these things are acting and therefore, ok. So, this is equivalent to saying minus f u. So, this is v star v if you like plus v a u, this is in w star w equal to 0 for every u in d a. Now, u a u is a typical element of the graph of a and this tells you that minus f v is killing all of them. So, that means that j of v f f belongs to g a pop and all these implications go bo work both ways and therefore, that proves this proposition. Okay, so now we come back to the question of bounded operators. So, we have the following important proposition V w Banach A from d A contained in V taking values in w densely defined and closed. So, we are making an extra hypothesis uh, on this. Then the following are equivalent. 1 d of a is b. a is bounded. d of a star is w star and 4 a star is bound ok all these and in this case we have everything is a continuous linear operator now. So, norm a equals norm a star ok 1 implies 2 d a equals v. So, a is defined on the entire space, they are all Banach spaces and d a and a is closed that means the graph is closed. So, this is just a closed graph theorem. So, that is it ok. Now, 2 implies 3 a is bounded 
therefore we want to show dA. So, so let V belong to W star, we have already done this calculation a few minutes ago. So, if you take uh, U in D of A and then you take V U, V times A U and take the modulus that will be less than or equal to norm V into norm A U which is less than or equal to norm V into C times norm U, U in D. Okay. So, uh, this implies that V is in D A star by definition and therefore, D A star equals W star. We did this a little earlier already. Okay. So, now, 3 implies 4. We know that A star is closed and D A star equal W star. Therefore, again by the close graph theorem, we have that A star is a bounded linear operator or continuous linear operator. So, now we only have to show 4 in place 1. Okay. So, first claim D A star is closed. So, if A is A star is bounded, then D A star is uh, closed. Okay. So, let V n uh, V n converges to V in W star and V n in D A star. Okay. Then norm of A star V n minus V is less than or equal to C times norm V n minus V because A star is bounded. V n minus V m, V n minus V m. V n and V m are all in D A star and this is A star is bounded that is uh, statement number 4 and therefore you have this. So, this implies that A star V n is Cauchy. So, A star V n converges to some f. Okay. But then, so V n converges to V, A star V n goes to f. Therefore, when A star is closed and therefore, this implies that V belongs to D of A star and A V equal to F. Therefore, we have that D A star is closed. Okay. Now, we are going to, we will set G to be G of A, a graph of A, this is contained in V cross W, okay, and H to be 0 cross W, which is again in V cross W, okay. Now, by hypothesis, this is closed and this is trivially closed, so there is no problem, okay. Okay. And now, what can you say about G plus H? G plus H, so you are taking an element in G A. How does an element in G A look like? The first coordinate is from the domain, second component is A of U. So, U, A, U. And here they are taking 0, any element in W. So, when you add these two, you will get elements in the domain and any element in W. So, this will be D A cross W. Now, G A perp is J of G A star flipping and putting a minus sign and therefore, we have G perp plus H perp. Now, what is H perp? So, H perp you want to kill everything here. So, the second one if you want to kill all of W you will have to be 0 
and if you want to kill 0 any any element is fine. So, this will be B star cross 0 ok. So, if you so if you add these two so you have V star here in the first component and anything. So, this will be V star cross second component is 0 and in J G A star G A star the first component was domain of A star I have flipped it and so in J so this will be domain of A star. Okay. And then this is given to be closed because this is closed and V star. So, this will be closed and then we proved this theorem that this implies this is the only part of the theorem which I did not prove this implies that G plus H is closed that is G plus H is D A cross W therefore, D A is closed therefore, D A equals D A closure which will be equal to B and that is the first part of the theorem which we want. So, this proves the equivalence of all the statements. So, now let us, uh, so for all u in V and uh, V in W star, you have V A u, this is W star W equals uh, a star B U. This is B star. Okay. So, mod of V A U is therefore less than equal to norm A star, norm V, norm U. Okay. So, so, V for every element in the dual space, so for all V in W star and then we from this we saw corollary because what is the corollary of the Hahn-Banach theorem? If you in fact, it is a max namely the norm of the vector is sup of overall norm V less than or equal to 1 V A U. Okay. So, this will be less than or equal to norm A star norm u and this implies that norm a is less than or equal to norm a star. On the other hand, the same relationship will tell you mod a star b u is less than or equal to norm V, norm A, norm U and this is now a dual element. So, you, you just have to take the supremum over all U and therefore, this tells you that norm A star B is less than or equal to norm A times norm V and therefore, you have norm of A star is less than or equal to norm B. So, we have both inequalities and that shows that the two norms are equivalent. Okay. So, we will continue with some properties of the uh, dual, so uh, of the adjoint. So, we will connect what is the relationship between the range null space of the of an operator and the range and null space of the adjoints and in between some annihilators will have to come in. So, we will see how these things work out, okay.